So the other day I did a video on a balloon popping game, which also runs on your phone here. So you can pop bubbles on it or balloons on it. Uh, we're going to improve it. We're going to give it more colors. We're going to add a scoring system up to the corner and um, yeah, make a few other tweaks. So this is just a follow up, making our game a little bit better because it was a very simple game that I did just to do a quick tutorial, but it ended up being kind of a fun, simple game. I know I'm not the first one to make a game like this, Rick and Morty, um, but um, yeah, just going to prove upon it. More balloons. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Okay, so improving our balloon pop game. Uh, so here it is. It's up on GitLab again, gitlab.com forward slash mailx1000 forward slash balloon dash pop dash game. Uh, I'm just going to clone it here. You can you can pull down the zip file from here or tar file, whatever you want. I'm going to clone it. So I'm going to push it back to the server. I'm just going to use this uh, clone with the SSH uh, because I have git set up. If you don't have git set up, then you might want to use another route or set up git. Uh, for me, once I copy that, I have an alias to... Uh, I just type clone and it pulls what's from my clipboard, but uh, you would probably go git clone, put in that URL you just copied. So now that I have that, I can move into my balloon pop game directory and then into its source directory. And at this point I can use uh, Godot to open up the project file. And then here we are. Okay, so now I want to bring in some assets here. So I'm going to move these over here, and I'm just going to drag and drop our new assets. I have a font, the license for the font, and I have a cloud I made, which I, we may or may not get to in this tutorial. So I'm going to drag that right into here, and then I can get rid of that. Okay. So, uh, again, let's look at some of the things I want to change. Let's go into our main script here. One thing that we had is I had it where the balloons start appearing faster and faster, and the fastest they got was a half a second intervals, I felt like that was way too slow. I'm going to go ahead and set that down to a uh, 0.2, so that's like an eighth of a second, if I'm doing my math right. Okay, so now uh, as time goes on, the, when they get to their top speed, they're going to be appearing faster. Now let's go ahead and open up our balloon scene here. And we have this hue shift, which is a shader that I did not create. Uh, but here we go, right here. Let's go ahead and just turn off this that, but turn this off so I can see the balloon a little bit better. I'm going to choose our sprite here and under the inspector if I go down to materials and click on material shader uh, right here I have shader parameters and if we put this between a number between 0 and 1 so if I do like 0.5 it shifts it halfway uh, 0 0.6 uh, 0.7 that gets us like a darker blue if we do 0 0.2 it's going to be like a yellow so that's how we adjust it in the editor here. But if we go into the code here, you can see that I have used, and again, this is code that, that came along with the shader, create a random hue. They're using this uh, mathematical equation right here. I'm gonna change that. One thing we could do, basically it's getting a random integer, getting a number divisible by three, dividing it by two, and then dividing it by 3.2 as a float. So it's gonna get us a decimal. Uh, you could up this number to like six or seven, and it would give us a bigger range. Um, but you can also just put a random range with some steps in there. In fact, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and just say 7 because that's something I tested out there. So basically it's going to give us, instead of before we had three colors, we're going to have, um, I guess, seven different colors possible here. I think is how that breaks down. But we're going to get more colors in the balloons. We're going to get some teals, some purples, maybe some pinks, and some darker blues. So uh, if we go ahead and hit F5 at this time, our game will start. There we go. We have a green, which we had last time. There, so that's more of a pink, where before we had just a red, but we'll still have reds. There's a teal color. So we're getting more more colors now. Okay, but we can't pop them because I turned off that uh, uh, 2D area, so we want to make sure we reactivate that. Okay, so we have that. Let's set up a scoring system. Uh, we need a singleton, which is like a global script that all our scripts, all our scenes can access. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to right-click on our resources and say new script, and I'm just going to call it... Uh, global, you can call it whatever you want, and then in our project settings, we're going to go over here to auto load, we're going to choose that script, uh, global, and yeah, we'll just call it global with a capital G there, it's added. Now, we can call what's in there from anywhere, so I'm going to open up that script by clicking on it here, I'm going to go ahead and clear out some of this, and we're just going to create variables, because I want to start keeping a score, so we're going to say uh, var score equals zero, var missed 
equals zero. So when we miss a balloon, it will count how many we have missed. Uh, go ahead and save that. Now if we go back into our main function, uh, actually if we go into our balloon function, every time we pop one, what we can do here is we can say global, and this is case sensitive, so it's capital G because that's what we set in the project settings, uh, dot score plus equals one. And then we can also say when one leaves the screen, so on exit screen, we're going to say global.missed plus equals one. Okay, so now we're keeping score, but we need to display that somewhere. Right now the game's going to work like normal, but you're not going to see it. So we're going to go back to our main scene, 2D view here, and we're going to add in a child node of a label. We have that here. Let's go ahead and just put in some placeholder text. We'll just say score miss, but you can make it say popped or escaped or whatever you want to call it. We'll say zero and zero. And you're not really going to ever see that, but I just want to, because as soon as the game loads, we're going to run a script that updates that, but I want to be able to see what it will look like on my screen here. So that's why we're typing it here. But now we have this label selected. I can come down here and I can go to custom fonts. Click where it says empty and say dynamic font and then click on dynamic font. Go to font and we can drag this font over here, which is a free font that I got. We're going to go to settings and up this to 64 I think will be good. We'll give it an outline that's black and I think that looks pretty good. So now if we start our game, we'll be able to see that up in the corner here. But it's not going to actually update. We need to tell it to update. So we're going to go back into our script here. And we're going to create a function that's just called update score or something like that. And we're going to say here that our label, so actually we need to grab our label. So we could do dollar sign label is one way to do it. Uh, but I think it's better if we actually set that as a variable up here. So I'm going to say on ready var label. And we can do dollar sign label. Or I think it just looks better. I'm not sure if there's any benefit doing one way or another other than I just think that this looks a little bit better even though it's longer. But now that we've done that, anywhere in this script here, we can call label just by typing label and it will be that label. And we're going to say that label dot text plus equals, actually let's just do equals. So that will clear it out. Every time this, this function is called, it's going to basically overwrite the text that's there. And we're going to say score colon and then we're going to say plus and the score is an integer, so we want to convert it to a string, so we're going to say plus, and then the string function here, we're going to say global.score, and I'm just going to copy that and paste it down here, but we're not going to want to override it, we're going to say add to that, I'm going to do backslash n for new line, missed, and instead of score, we're going to say missed, and if I typed everything right, oh, something I I already realized I forgot. We created that function, but we haven't called it. We want to call this every time our game loops. So we're just going to do that. So every time the game loops, so multiple times a second, theoretically 30 or 60 times a second, uh, it's going to check the score. So here we go. Oh, we crashed for some reason. Global GD type string. So it's saying the value of type string, and that's on this line. So maybe I don't have to. I guess I never actually set it as an integer, which technically is something uh, to be correct. You should. Okay. Okay. Let's let's put this back and look at our global script here. Var score. It should be saying it as an integer since I gave it zero here. Let let me read that error again real quick. So I'm saying, well, let's run the script so I can see what the error says exactly. It's saying invalid set index text on node global with value of string. As far as I know, I'm doing everything right. Let's go ahead and comment out the second part of this line. Go ahead and hit F5 to run it. It's still, it should be label. That's our label, and it should be text. Oh, well, okay, let's undo those comments. This is 
My fault. Up here, for some reason, I chose global instead of label when I was setting this. I guess I was too busy talking to you guys. Now let's try it. Okay, so we have a score of zero, missed zero, and I'm going to pop. Oh, look, I got a score one. That one goes off the screen. It should... Oh. Why did it say two already? Oh, 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 okay. So let me pop a few here. Am I not freeing the queue when I'm popping them? So that should add. If I click that and that and that. Oh, see, it's still counting them when they go off the screen. So let's go into our balloon here. And we're saying when it goes off the screen, exit screen, we're going to say miss when I'm killing it. It's Q. Maybe I'm waiting too long on this. There's probably a better way to do this. Let's see. I'm going to pop that one. I'm going to pop that one. It's still saying miss when it goes off the screen. So I guess when I'm popping it, it thinks that it's going off the screen. That's interesting. I didn't think that it would do that. Um, so let's go ahead and see. I have a variable here called death. Dead. Did I already use that somewhere? Right here. If not dead. Okay. So input event. If not dead. Pop. Here I'm going to say the same thing. I'm going to say if it's not dead. Let's give that a try. So I pop that one, I pop this one. So when I pop them, it's immediately saying that they're dead, so it should not recognize them. And it seems to be working, so let's let some go off the screen now. Okay, that's working. Let's let a few more go off the screen just to check. There we go, there we go. Boom, and I can pop some. Okay, it's working. There might be a, a better option to freeing up our um, our balloons, uh, but we're, we're good so far on this. But actually, that's good that I did that because I'm actually not going to free them when they go off the screen. I think what I'm going to do is have them go back down to the bottom of the screen, and that way, if you the more you miss, the more come onto the screen. Does that make sense? So what I'm going to do here, instead of freeing them when they exit the screen, I'm going to say set their position Y, which is up and down. So position dot Y equals um, our screen width. So we got our screen width in our main function here. So let's just control shift F and I'm going to say size. So I do this sometimes to look so I have viewport rectangles. So that's the command. So sometimes we do this. So I'm going to say get viewport dot size. And I think is it just dot y or is it like this? Y plus we'll say 300. Now let's say 500. Oh, I think it was already giving me an error there. Let's go ahead and let them run up the screen here. Again, I'll, I'll, I'm, I've had these ideas. I haven't actually done this yet. So this is kind of, there we go, it did crash. So let's go ahead and do this. So that's getting our screen height. So even if we resize our screen, we know the screen height and we're going to add to it so that the balloon, so we see this uh, pink balloon going up here and the green balloon going up here. Once they go off the screen, there it is. That one just came back and we should be seeing the green one coming back up. So if you, the more you miss, they're going to go to the bottom of the screen and come back up. So you're missing them, but then you have another opportunity to get them. But the more you miss, the more they're going to be coming. So that's something I wanted to do. Last thing I want to do with this code is um, add some clouds. So I added a texture of a cloud here. So let's go ahead and I don't know how this is going to look. It may look horrible, but we're going to give it a try. We're going to say new scene. I'm going to say 2D and I'm going to say, I'm going to call it a cloud. And I'm going to change that to be change type. Some people leave these as node uh, 2Ds, and I'm not sure the reasoning for that. Um, I'm going to change type to a sprite, just a regular sprite. It's not animated. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my cloud. And this is the cloud texture I drew and make it its texture here. And I'm going to add a script to this. So attach a script. We're going to call it cloud. Again, if you have a larger project, you want to put your scripts in one directory and your sprites in another. This is a very small project. If it got bigger, we would want to move it into there. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say 
var speed equals, and I'm just gonna give it a speed at first here of 100. Then I'm also gonna say function process delta, and then I'm gonna say pos oh, position, and it's basically what we did for the balloons, but in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna say it's position y uh, plus equals, wait, plus we want it to go down, so minus equals speed times delta. Again, delta is basically the time between loops, think of it that way. And what, what we're doing here is instead of just saying move at this speed, we're saying move at this speed times that, which might be a fraction. It just helps if you have different speed machines uh, keeping a consistent speed of your item. So if you design this on a very slow machine, you play it on a faster machine, the clouds aren't going to be moving super fast. And if they're um, and the other way around. If you design a faster machine, it's not going to run super slow on a slower machine. It should keep it at a consistent speed. So if I do that, if I hit F, or I should have said F6. So F5 starts our game. F6. Yes, save it. Save it. We should see the cloud. Whoop, it went real fast. So let's put this down to like 10. Let's see. See it up in the corner here. There we go. It's moving up off the screen. We might adjust the speed a little bit more, but that's our start. And then we're also going to say... We're going to add in a child node, visibility notifier, and we're going to say here, with that selected, we're going to go to node, and we're going to say on exited screen, we're going to run this function within our code. So when it goes off the screen, we are going to say position dot y negative, oh, video finished rendering, negative or equals negative, let's see, we want these coming down from the top, oh, I actually did it the other way, I want the clouds coming down, not going up, so they're going to go to negative, we'll just say 200, just to get it off the top of the screen, we're going to say plus on this one because we want the clouds going down, and real quick, just to test this out, I'm going to go to our main system, I'm going to add in a child cloud and I'm just going to put it right here in the center of the screen start up our game and see what the cloud does good it's going down which is great so we can definitely speed it up a little bit but we're going to give it variable speeds but let's go ahead back to our clouds here with our clouds selected we're going to transform it I'm going to make it a little bit larger I'll say 4 4 and uh, actually my squares my, my clouds very squarish so let's actually just do um, three on that. There we go. That looks good, but just depends on how I draw it. We're going to go in here to script, and then we're going to say, let's just do 50 for right now. There we go. The cloud's moving down. Now, we also want to make sure the cloud stays behind the balloons, so that's important. So let's go here, and for our balloons, choose our balloon, go to um, Z index. We'll set this up to something higher, like 50, and we'll go to clouds, and we'll set its Z index to negative 50. It doesn't really matter how big the number is, but just want to make sure there's a difference there. And uh, let's go in here back to our cloud script. And for their speed, let's do a random range of 50 to 100. So our clouds all move at different speeds. And then we can code it for them to show up and make it a little random. But let's go ahead and just set some into our game. So I'm going to put one here. Let's set our score, our label here. It's index. Oh, you know what? It's a label, so they don't use the index. They use something else. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Our clouds might be in front of, well, unless we do this. There we go. That works. So I have one cloud there. So the problem with manually, whoops. Okay. Let's put this back up here for now. Actually, let's put it back down here and lock it in place, right? So I'm going to choose this and say lock, so now I can't drag that around. The problem with manually setting our clouds is we're not really taking the size of our screen into account. So I'm putting this out like this, but if somebody had a, uh, a screen wider than this, it may not work out too well. Let's just go ahead and I'm going to add one more right down here. 
So they should all be moving at slightly different speeds. See, my screen's wider than I had anticipated. And that's the problem with manually doing this. And, uh, but they should get kind of spread out over time because they're all moving at different speeds. Oops. I'm doing it this the cheap way. Normally I would code something like this. Here we go, we got clouds all moving in the background. I don't know if I like that, if that's too distracting from the balloon popping, but I'm gonna leave it for now because I did it. But uh, we have these clouds now. If you don't like that, the game's open source. You know where to get the source code, go ahead and remove them. Uh, but that's it. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There's a link in the description. Go ahead and check that out. Uh, and as always, I hope that you have a great day and I hope that you learned something. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Okay, so hold on. Do you remember how we increased the uh, rate at which the balloons appear? With that and the balloons looping around, it does get a little out of hand. We could do something where it counts how many balloons are on the screen and sets a max, uh, but I think I'm just going to go back into my script here, uh, my main script, and change this delay back to a half a second, because uh, that seemed pretty good before. It was a little slow, but now that our balloons are looping around when you miss them, uh, I, I think it will even out. And the only way to really test this is to, you know, wait a minute or two and see what the balloons do. Uh, but I might tweak that number a little bit, but I just wanted to go back because as soon as I stopped recording, it's like all these balloons started coming on the screen. So it starts off kind of slow, but will increase in speed. Again, thanks for watching and I hope that you have a great day.